Okay. So. It's five o'clock UTC. Welcome everyone. Um, I think people still joining. And we have a good crowd of 30 plus people. Thank you, excellent. Uh, yeah. Let's get started. I think we have a packed uh, agenda. Uh, we try to keep everything within one hour uh, because everybody also planned that in their agendas. Um, this is Delek interim, Dina's op interim meeting. Uh, let's see, let's go to the slides. Oh, no, I did something wrong probably. Again. Yeah. There we are. So, so welcome to the DNSOP interim meeting. Uh, I'm Benno. Uh, my co chairs, Tim Wisinski, Suzanne Wolf. Our ISGAD area director is Warren, Warren Kumari. Uh, the minutes will be taken by Paul. Thank you, Paul. Um, Thank you for the inter so thank you for joining us for the interim. Uh, maybe a brief introduction before we go to the agenda and the other stuff. Um, we organized the interim a little bit out of the ordinary, maybe for work that is not yet presented at the ITF working group. Uh, the time we were planning the meeting, there was no draft, but there was a good group of people, contributors, authors uh, working on this ID. Um, we were in contact uh, with them also. Um, and we thought it was a good moment to kind of bootstrap the whole process of this work instead of waiting for the ITF for the first introductions. So this gives us an opportunity to give us already some feedback, uh, technical, but also thinking about above, et cetera, et cetera. That will be part of uh, the discussion later on. Uh, and to at least to get started before the ITF 119, and we can go forward. So uh, instead of starting at 119 and then make decisions, et cetera, so we can win sort of three, four months work. Um, so thank you for your understanding. I think this is kind of a little bit the context of this uh, interim. Um, this is an ITF interim meeting and also the note well applies. So we uh, uh, assume that everybody is aware of the note well. Um, these are the, well, the regular meeting tips. We're all remote, so we know how it works. No. So this is the code of conduct guidelines. We take them very seriously. Uh, yeah, so be respectful to each other and constructive feedback. Anytime if something it's out of the ordinary and uh, you feel things are not correctly handled, discussed, please reach out to the uh, to the genus of chairs. We take this very seriously. Then I would like to pass on to Tim, who will just kick off the meeting before we go to the presentations. Yeah, thank you, Benno, and thanks all for showing. I've only got basically this slide and one other. I tried to sort of put together what our goals are for today. Mostly this is technical discussion. And I took those motivations from the um, hackathon slide deck, I think, from 118. Um, and I added the application users because um, that was kind of my my sort of thinking on that, right? So the motivations, like what groups of people are motivated by this? And our goal is no process discussion day, right? That's for the Bob. We just want to do technical stuff. Um, and then if we go to the next slide, it's basically the lineup. Um, Benno, I think it's, you can hit the slide button. Yep. Um, I think Ralph is talking on the delegate draft. Um, 
And the, I didn't put it, but I believe it's Schumann is talking about on the compliance testing results. I know he uploaded this stuff. And then there's some open discussion points that we're going to kick off. And then, oh, actually, there is one more page. Um, and then Paul Waters is going to, um, he's got a, a, a presentation on sort of reflections on the daily draft. And um, some people have said like, oh, that's a lot of slides. And we know that, but we've talked with Paul and he's well aware of that, right? Um, and a lot of that's more background as well, sort of thing. And then um, wrap up with some open discussions and, and reflection on the interim. If we hit one more slide, Benno, and then I think we can kick off to Ralph. Yep. And I just had this question, and this is just me from like an operator's point of view, not a zone, you know, not a kill the operator, or a, but more like an operator operator. How do you sell this to admins who do DNS, but don't do DNS, right? Um, and and how it helps them. And I know we can solve, and I mean, it's here, like when I read it all, we just, I think it, it's like that elevator pitch thing. How do we sort of do that? And I hope we can sort of, we'll get to there along the way. Anyway, that's all I had to say. Um, of course, bash away. And then um, we can kick off to um, Mr. Ralph. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ralph. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, Ralph, do you want to run your slides yourself? No. Or shall I do that? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, hear great. Hear so, no, I mean, if you want to uh, run the slide, that's probably better. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one. This is the correct one. Uh, I don't see anything at the moment. Okay. I did share something. Um, we see it. We Sorry. see it. It'll catch up to Ralph. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Are we on, on, on the second slide? So so this is the first slide, Evolving DNS with DLEC. So, yeah, I mean, that's then, just the introduction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go to the second okay, slide. We, yeah, the second slide. OK, I can't see it, but I can speak to it because I have it in front of me. OK, so this came above with, uh, I mean, some people uh, <laughs> thinking about how can we improve or evolve DNS because uh, there have been uh, a lot of things that people wanted to have or people might want to have uh, going forward. And for these use cases, uh, as we've seen in some of the work on Deprive and others, there is really, there's no easy way to evolve the DNS currently. So uh, we sat together and said, what, what would be the goals to actually evolve DNS, do DNS 2.0 or 3.0, whatever you call it. And one of the main drives, well, we want to make it so that we can allow future innovation. So that is extensible from the start. Uh, and there are a couple of problems out there. I mean, encryption from recursive to OS, that was a, a long, long discussion with lots of different proposals going nowhere in Deprive. And it is, I guess, a problem worth solving. But of course, well, we don't have a solution at the moment. And the other is that, in the DNS, there are lots of people who actually operate the DNS service, but who are not the owners of the domain, hence have no kind of relationship with the parent. And especially when it comes to DNSSEC, that is a problem because you eventually want to roll the keys and that's not easy. And uh, of course we want to evolve that by keeping it sort of compatible so that we kind of, it's not a big bang <laughs> evolution. And we want to also keep certain stuff like the namespace, the management boundaries, kind of zones, and usual data structure, like you have a name, I mean, class here is not used, but type and, and value. So that, that was the goal that we are set. It. And then uh, Peter Spasek, thankfully, uh, uh, yeah, can you go to the next slide then? So how did we get here? So Peter Spasek uh, kind of set up the NS Hackathon for the IETF in Prague and said pretty much, let's, everybody's there, get together, discuss things. And it was pretty open discussions. I mean, we've, a lot of people before that actually 
sent these requirements or proposals that they had and we looked at all of them and we discussed how to do that and uh, we discussed it for nearly two days and afterwards we said well um, we have sort of some of the uh, ingredients to do it also already with something called the SVCB record because that's a record that I think became an RFC at that IETF uh, and that is extensible and we always, I mean, being the S guys with the kind of boundary that you want to have that is um, at the uh, delegation level, so at the delegation point. So we said, well, um, we want to have a parent side SVCP type record because then can be signed. I mean, one of the things with delegation at the moment is that NS records are not signed, at least not at the parent. And uh, we want to have additional data, like glues are not signed either. So uh, all of these things that, that we said, well, might be good to have. And to uh, another nice property that came with SVCB for free is the capability of indirection. So if you have a zero uh, at the SVC priority, then it means pretty much, don't ask me, go there and ask these guys. And after we discussed this after two days, we discovered that, well, that's similar to what Tim April had proposed two years ago or so. So we said, well, okay, well, maybe we can just use the, reuse that. And we, over the course of the ITF, we set together, took that draft, uh, put in a repo and kind of mesh, messed around with it. And that's what actually becomes the, the, uh, the, the draft that we have here is based on, on that pretty much. And we decided that we want to have a lively discussion about that. So we used during the IETF, the DNS ORC MetaMouse chat. So we said, well, just keep that. And some of the discussions also happened at GitHub. And I hope future discussions will maybe happen on the DNS op mainly. And there has been some live discussion today already on DNS op. So uh, that's a good sign. So uh, go to slide four, please. So what is DELEC in, well, we're getting from the 10,000 to maybe 5,000 foot level down there. It's a parent site only SVCB style record. So it is really, other than the DELEC as a resource record type, pretty much most of the stuff behind that is SVCB and how much we deviate from that isn't, I think, yet exactly defined. But at the moment, pretty much a lot of the stuff you can do with SVCB, you can do with, with, with DELEC. But it's parent set only, and it creates a zone cut. But given that the record is only at the parent, there's no ambiguity. I mean, one of the things that has multiple discussions over lots of IPS is the NS record. Is it in the parent, in the child? I mean, what should people do about it? And there's there are different kind of, how do you say, opinions on that. Uh, and we want to kind of get rid of the ambiguity. and. We want to have it signed. And it's similar to DS because DS is always the parent. There's no discussion about it and it is signed. So we want to have that kind of capability. And we also, given that a lot of people there were actually implementers of recursive resolvers, we don't want to go out there and add additional queries because that was one of the things that we disliked about the deprive uh, probing stuff that is additional queries mostly for nothing. So we want to have this discovered during the normal iterative process. And um, again, SVCP already sold. It's kind of a lowest additional parameters interaction and can be signed. So with that all now, what would have need to change for DELEC to kind of be available? Can you go to the next slide? So of course, the DS software needs to understand the DELEC resource record. I mean, Technically, uh, um, a lot of sort of forwarders or resolvers will understand new air types in the way that they can forward them. But we need some special sauce, so to speak, for, for, for Delic to do that because the authoritative server needs to provide the Delic records with referrals because normally authoritative servers don't do that. They only supply what they are authoritative for or if it's a referral, they have a set of stuff in the moment that's NS and DS. And that the thing that we would have to add here is DELEC. And uh, 
there's some special processing for those uh, domains like co.uk or <laughs> what's the other? I think it's com.au, which have the same parent and child zone on the same servers. Uh, there needs to be some special processing, but that already is there in the code path for all current implementation because that's how the S is done today. So it's really, we are just adding something to existing code paths rather than changing it completely. That was also the idea behind that. And then uh, someone needs to tell the resolver, well, does this zone understand Dalek? And uh, we up to now have decided to go with the DNS key flag. Uh, and we'll get to that a, a, a bit later. And then, of course, the uh, resolvers need to kind of get the records and process them and do stuff with them. But I mean, that's fairly understood. And for legacy stuff, I mean, I think Roy will present something. We, I think, tested most of the implementations out there, and it just works. So can you go to the next slide? Why not? So again, this is, comes from a bit the discussion that we had before on how to maybe solve that. Why not use the DS record and encode stuff in it? It doesn't require a new QTAP. And we had multiple proposals on that and deprive, and they were hacks, and they probably would have bigger kind of compatibility problems. And also, it is kind of like, um, it does not fully replace DNS because you still would have to use DNS to get uh, uh, the record down there. So um, DS is a hack, and we didn't want to do hacks pretty much. That what comes. And another idea that I think was proposed: well, why not use some underscore something somewhere in a different part of the tree? And again, the idea was to discover it during the normal iterative process. Don't do any additional query outs because that's kind of usually bad for latency. And uh, also, it is not something how resolves at the moment work. So that was the, and the only the only thing time I ever I think we did that was with DLV, and that's gone for good for sex. So let's a bit uh, go to the next slide. And so let's talk about the DNS key. Um, so when you get a referral for a um, a domain that is signed, you get a DS record. And, uh, but you are not getting the information if sort of the uh, domain also would have a Dalek record. Because, I mean, that, and uh, to have an authenticated denial of Dalek requires an additional proof of absence. And that is the uh, special thing that needs to be done for DNSSEC processing. Because otherwise, the attacker could just strip the record and be done with it. And the, we would have hard time kind of <laughs> upgrading Delic because the attackers could just downgrade. So uh, that is the resolver needs to know, can I expect either a positive Delic or a proof of absence? And um, for that, we decided to use the DNS key fl flag. And the reason was that it is a single sign per zone. And it also means that we only have to do it per zone. If we would have to use a DS record with one of these stacks, it would mean that we have to, in every referral, kind of add the DS record that that, 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 that kind of signals that. So that's why uh, we got to get for that. And go to the next slide. So what comes next? I mean, again, we've already explained some of the use cases. Uh, the DNS stop operator delegation, including the NSEC. I mean, and the secure transport stuff, that's kind of like the natural stuff. We've already in the repository started drafts, but they are pre-00, so uh, we want to work on that, but we first want to have the main draft in a halfway presentable state. And then there's the debound stuff. I mean, maybe Gallic can do something with that. And one of the things that we discussed discovered uh, when we were talking about uh, kind of post-quantum is that the signatures might become larger because DNS is still limited 64 kilobytes. Um, you can't do anything bigger. 
So that might be a problem going forward. And Delic would also be a way to kind of say, okay, now for this domain, we can also have this path that can then supplies new wire formula, what have you. And I mean, the future is kind of boundless. <laughs> uh, so if you have another use case, feel free to discuss it. And with that, I come to questions. Or we can, I mean, uh, I'm not sure what, how we want to run that. But thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ralph. <laughs> um, let's see for time. I think it's best we, we keep the questions at the, um, let's say, after the next presentation. Okay. Yeah. Only for direct clarification, but for a broader discussion, maybe we go further to the next presentation. Um, let's see, that's the compliance test. Okay, Roy. Hi, everyone. Um, um, this is Roy Adams. This work is done together with Shimon Hugh and uh, with a lot of advice from the um, from the authors of the Delic draft. Um, Benno, do you mind going to the next slide? Do you mind yeah, doing course. the slides for yeah. me? So, uh, yeah, I, I cannot mute myself because then I don't hear anyone else. So that's very <laughs> strange. So my microphone will be open. Excuse me, but. It works in this way, uh, maybe, yeah. Okay, next slide. All right, so um, um, as you've heard from Ralph, um, the idea is to, to plunge a, a new, for legacy resolvers, unknown record inside a delegation response, inside a referral response. And um, I've, I've offered to, um, uh, together with Schumann to, to test this if legacy resolvers um, won't fall over unsolicited, signed or unsigned, uh, unknown records, because to them, to legacy resolvers, Delic is an unknown record. Um, and they also shouldn't fall over authenticated denial of unknown records, even though um, a DS might be present. So in those delegations, you don't need an uh, NSEC or NSEC3 record. So we needed to test that as well. Um, um, in addition, we also tested, for instance, if um, Remember the signal that that Ralph was referring to. Um, that new resolvers should expect a Delic or a proof of absence of Delic. That needs to be a secure signal. That needs to be assigned something, and you could do that with a with a, um, a faux DS record, or you can do that with an with an with a flag in a DNS key. So we tested that as well. If legacy resolvers don't fall over uh, unknown flags or um, unknown digest and DS records. Next slide, please. Yep. Um, so this is the setup. We had a parent zone and a child zone. This slide will, slide will tell you what a parent zone is. Um, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, we have a, a legacy zone. Um, forget the research.icann.org. That's, 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 um, well, that's what we use for testing. But um, the parent zone is basically legacy here. And that's the baseline standard reference test zone. What that means is um, that's a zone that doesn't have any delic in it. Um, needs to be resolved um, by all the implementations we tested, and it needs to be resolved securely, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you have a baseline, what a response should look like. Then uh, we have a zone uh, with DELEC in it. There's an NSEC sign zone. We have an NSEC3 sign zone. Um, not that we expect any difference between NSEC and NSEC3, but we could, so we did. Um, so that's just the same DELEC information is in there, just signed um, using NSEC3. And then um, that's DELEC3. And DELEC F and DELEC 3F is the same NSEC and the same NSEC3 sign zone, but they had either a DS um, with um, a faux DS record um, um, or a um, unknown DNS key flag in it. And then we have a last zone, an unsigned zone um, containing DELEC. So that's a, not a DNSX sign zone, but a regular zone. Um, and that had a DELEC delegation in it. Um, this is this is this is not a statement that Delic should work with um, unsigned zone or signed zone. This is just one thing we wanted to test in case it would come up later. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the delegation setup. So in all these um, uh, six zones you saw before, uh, we have these uh, delegations in it. So it's secure. It's a Delic secure, uh, right? It has a Delic record next to a DS record. 
Um, and then we have an, uh, an unsigned delegation in there, basically a, um, a, um, a delegation to an unsigned zone, but with a delegate record there. And then we have a, uh, a secure a signed delegation right to a secure zone without a delegate record there. Now, um, it doesn't make sense to use these in all the different zones, right? Um, so that, 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 that's why you see those two notes here. And um, next slide, please. Now we can see what we, um, um, the queries that we, that we have built. So the queue name all start with text and it would ask for a text record. I didn't specify that here, but it would ask for a text record. And if it was able to resolve that, um, then that's a good thing, right? And um, um, all of these queries were sent to all different resolvers that we, I'll show you in a minute, these different resolvers. Um, the columns here, you can see um, if the parent is signed, if the child is signed, um, which kind of authenticated denial we've used, NSEC, NSEC3, all these refer to the previous slides. Um, Delic signal is that, remember the, uh, the, the DNS key flag or the SHIM DS record or the 4DS record. Uh, Delic in chain, that means if the resolver at one point in time would get a Delic record or not, right? Um, and then um, the last column would show you if an AD bit is expected. And you would expect an AD bit if the entire um, resolving chain is signed and validated. And you would not expect an AD bit is if part of the zone is unsigned. I hope that makes sense. Um, so these are basically 15 queries uh, that, you, that you see. Uh, next slide, please. We send those um, 15 queries to each of these implementations. You see here eight implementations. So three versions of bind, three versions of pre-DNS recursor, one version of unbound and one version of uh, not resolver. The reason we have picked this is because um, we asked each implementation developer uh, or each team, which we should test. Um, um, ISC basically said, oh, just use the one that are, um, that are um, still supported and that are fully supported and use the bleeding edge one. And um, um, Unbound, we tested the latest version. Uh, PDNS recursor, same thing also. The latest supported, the, the, the last, the, the um, almost out of date, basically, that's still supported and the bleeding edge. Um, uh, since we've tested, um, um, probably some of these versions have already uh, been updated. Um, not resolver, also five, uh, the, the, the latest version of it. Um, so these are eight implementations. Um, next slide, please. Um, we sent in total um, 120 queries, uh, 15 queue names to eight resolvers. Um, between each individual query, uh, we did a restart of the resolver. So cache wouldn't have been shared between two uh, instantiations. Um, that said, all the zone data everywhere was only five seconds TTL. Um, and um, so that would have been a, a, a time enough to, to, to not restart and just wait, but we wanted to be absolutely sure. All um, queries resulted successfully. So we expected um, um, we, we saw the AD where we expected it. We didn't see the AD where we didn't expect it. Um, all text records came back um, as expected. Um, so that means that the tested resolver implementations have no issue with unsolicited signed or unsigned unknown record or authenticated denials of, of unknown records uh, in a delegation response. Also, um, we, we tested the resolver's implementation to completely ignore um, DS record with unknown digest. Uh, which they should, that's actually an RC4030 something, one of the original DNSSEC um, specifications. And then it also ignores unknown flag in DNS keys without ignoring the DNS key. Now, um, when I tested this, I didn't really realize if this was ever tested before, but um, um, Paul Wouters um, informed me that this was actually tested before by him and, 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 and he could have told me that um, <laughs> that this should all, all have worked and would have saved me a lot of time. But, but uh, hey, um, that's, only, uh, that's only in hindsight. So um, with, regards to, with regards to legacy resolvers, um, they won't stumble over Delec. Uh, next slide, please. Um, since then, um, we've also tested quad eight, quad one, quad nine, 
um, et cetera, et cetera, many of the publicly um, uh, available resolvers. Um, no, I, we have found no issues, same results as the tested resolvers. Uh, Schumann has gone out of his way to also use the, um, the right um, Atlas probes. Um, um, I don't think we saw anything interesting there. Um, Schumann has written all the software for this. It's called adns-server.py, and you can find it on his GitHub repository. Um, it's a brilliant little um, little DNS server that can do underfly signing. It can do DELEC if you want to specify that. Um, it, it was really, really helpful to do this. Um, the, the, the bulk of the work was actually writing the zone data and not the actual testing itself. So thanks to Schumann for that. And um, that's it for me. Um, I don't think there's another slide. Yeah, there's no other slide. Uh, so back to yeah. Benno. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Roy. Um, oh, well, uh, sorry. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I see some errors here. I don't know what is going on. Still, people hear me? So we have now a uh, brief uh, well, slot for discussions and questions for clarification of the presented work by Ralph and Roy. And next we go on with Paul, Paul Wouters. But maybe first we have, a, before we have a broad discussion, we can have some questions. People can raise their hand on the two presentations we have seen. Yeah, okay. I see Victor raised his hand. Please, Victor, you can take the, the microphone. Uh, okay. Yeah, there you are. All right, I have to click on it. Okay, uh, it's not controlled by you. A uh, couple of points. Uh, one, I didn't see Microsoft's resolver uh, tested. I recommend it. It's, it's very different, right, in its mm. origin than many of the other ones. Uh, so I would encourage somebody to look at the Windows Resolver as well, uh, Windows Server, uh, DNS Resolver. Um, but um, I did read the draft uh, zero zero, and uh, while I actually like where the Deleg ideas are going, I found the draft rather a negative experience. It's sort of more confusing than illuminating. So I would strongly encourage the authors to rewrite it in a better expository style. It sort of has lots of haphazard examples, uh, doesn't really motivate or clearly explain to me, you know, that the yeah, personal, I'm sorry, uh, impression uh, is that the, the draft is, requires significant editing, not so much of the technical content, but of the mm -hmm. presentation to make it coherent and clear. I don't know who the authors are. Well, I, I guess I can quickly look. So I'm not directly blaming anybody. I didn't pay attention to who the authors are, so this isn't a personal attack. Uh, but I would like to see some uh, contributions on the editing side. And, you know, I don't know if I have the cycles, maybe I will. Uh, but maybe somebody else can uh, give it a thorough reorganization. I found it. Uh, uh, unclear. Uh, and the other thing uh, uh, is that there isn't yet, separately from the draft which tries to specify the desired behavior, a sort of a motivations document, right? Uh, li like RFC 4034, you know, or, or some of the IDNA specs kind of start out with, mm -hmm. you know, what problem are we solving, you know, and what are the requirements and that sort of thing. Uh, maybe that would help uh, as, as a separate uh, goal, because clearly this thing is writing only a subset of the problem right now. Uh, the full direction isn't yet specified, but it would be good to have a kind of a roadmap as well. Thank, thank you, Victor. Um, Roy, you're in the queue. Um, um... Hi, I, I don't want to speak for the authors, but I, I, I was a little bit involved um, in, the, in, the, in the progress of things. Um, first of all, about the content of the, of, 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 of the draft itself, um, I think the idea was made, um, they were proposed to split the document into, into various different things. So uh, first off, this document is kind of like Delic core to make sure that we get the DNS part right. 
and uh, in the same style of RFC 4033, 4034, 4035. And then a second document would, would basically specify what you can do with it, right? All the, all the, um, all the uh, uh, how do you call that? Um, all the offerings that Delic can have. And maybe there should be a third document, just like RFC 4033, that gives an introduction to, to this whole thing. Um, I, I agree with you that that um, um, this document is, is really a, a, a zero zero and um, and we welcome any 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 comments on oh, we I'm not one of the authors but um, um, I, 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 I've, I've sent some updates through um, through github to the to the authors um, I'm, I'm sure they agree with me that that um, any suggestion to improvement is is, is, is welcome. Thank you, uh, Rolf. Please go ahead. Yeah, I mean, in, in the same way, what uh, what Roy said again. I'm one of the authors, so again, this was kind of like we wanted to get it ready for 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 the for the interim, and uh, as it, we have different kind of drafts, and if we want to, I mean, if there if there is one more that kind of uh, really kind of sets maybe the requirements or motivation, then I, I'm I'm okay with that, and again, we are totally fine with uh, with people helping out and uh, discussing it. Absolutely no problem. All right, guys. Um, we did say we were going to save general discussion for after all the presentations. Is Yeah, indeed. So yeah, in, in the agenda, we had, we had 10 minutes for the, uh, discussions on the draft specific. So for, uh, but then, okay. then yeah, for, for questions specifically. Yeah, 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 we have two discussion uh, slots. So it might be a little bit uh, confusing. I agree. Thanks, uh, Suzanne. Uh, Paul, uh, I will. You want to run your slides yourself? No, go, go ahead. You can run them. I can. Let's put them on. And there we go. And okay, next slide. Uh, actually, uh, let me just clarify, just like I am talking purely as an individual DNS enthusiast, so um, not as an AD. Warren is the AD for here for this group, so um, this is just an, me as an individual. Okay, next slide. Okay, so um, the features of the Delic SI took them from the draft, and uh, this has just been um, talked about already. And we just wanted to highlight uh, the last two ones that I didn't really quite understand yet um, how this can be done. Um, but that can be uh, clarified later on uh, in the Dalek uh, draft. So, um, so next slide. So ag again, taken from the draft. Um, so there's the concept of the R type, which is, has a stored parent data uh, semantics like TTS record, sort of like an SVCB style, um, as explained just uh, just before. It has a downgrade protection by using DNS key flag. And the, uh, it has a, a protocol modification that allows it to be for the DELEC to appear with like when, when somebody does a Q type for, for NS records. So, um, so you basically get it for free without any additional overhead. OK, next slide. So I want to talk a bit about the cost of the, of the DELEC. Um, it requires the DNS to be changed, both at the resolving layer and at the authoritative layer. And that takes time. So the cost here is in time to deploy, and that's actually quite significant. Additionally, there's the requirements to get this um, somehow in EPP or in registered web GUI interfaces so that they can actually update or introduce a DELEC record. So, um, that is also quite a cost. If you, for instance, look at the um, how poorly supported DS records are even now at registrars, um, having another round of data records might actually also uh, uh, take a significant time. Um, so maybe those costs are, are reduced by other mechanisms uh, when when things like bootstrap and update and transfers of domains are, are, are more addressed. Um, so, so maybe that will become clear over time, but I think that that is something we should take into consideration when we're looking at uh, possible solutions. Um, similarly, C CDS and C-Sync um, have partially been uh, deployed uh, also, I guess, uh, fairly poorly. Um, and I want to remind people again that like uh, the DS record itself with the special capability of store at parent actually caused like a multi-year delay for DNSSEC because we basically had to wait for a new Wi-Fi standard to be deployed and people throwing out their old modems before the broken DNS implementations that would never see an update were actually thrown away and replaced. 
So there's a significant cost to um, doing a new record which has new DNS properties um, that require software updates through the whole path, like from authoritative, forwarder, and recursive. OK, uh, next slide. So what I really like about, about the brainstorming and the, the, the idea exchange that's happened around the day like uh, record is that I really like the fact that we would have signed glue in the parent. That's really good for DNS transparency to make sure that we can see when a parent actually misbehaves and they traverse a zone cut where they shouldn't. Uh, so that's really cool. I like it. Um, committing to the delegation is as well really cool by having a signed record, a signed daily record that says like, I'm, I'm saying there's a delegation here. The same parent can then not sneakily uh, withhold that delegation and serve straight, you know, A records or SVCB or TLSA records to take over its own child without having cryptographic proof that they did so. Really cool feature. The store child zone information at the parent zone like DS, yeah, so well, it's come up many, many times and it's a cool feature. <laughs> It's, it's, it's neat. Having the DS delegated to a DNS operator so that it doesn't involve the registrant anymore is a really cool feature. And further, and the last one, which I'm not sure if the day like in the current system could solve, but I think if uh, it would be a really cool use case to have. And this comes straight from my day job, where, for instance, we want to not only depend on a single uh, domain uh, hoster, we want to have two of them. But if one of them fails, it really depends on the failure whether or not my second DNS hoster will get the query. If, for instance, the signature is the, the, the data is still signed, but they've removed my zone because I don't know, like, you know, we didn't pay a bill or something. Um, if they then start signing, you know, uh, DNSSEC provable records that uh, certain records don't exist, then I then my whole failure of having two hosters is out the window. So I would really like it if the, the Dalek situation somehow could tackle that problem. Um, so that's an, another thing that I would really like to see uh, to see here. OK, so next slide. So now we're getting to the point where I'm a little unsure about how the Dalek does some things. And that could be um, because of my misunderstanding. And uh, this comes a bit back to Vico's point as well. It would be good if we can somewhere document these things and, and um, write down where, especially when we talk about query counts and latency and round trips, where they actually, you know, where there's more and where there's less and how that, how we amortize that win compared to name servers versus zones. So an example here, my first example, if you do DNSSEC over TLS to that IP address, um, it leaks a lot of information, even though it's completely fully encrypted, most people will know that if you're going to ns0.noads.ca, you're probably going to either noads.ca or libreson.org. There, there isn't really anything else done by that name server. That's all public information. So in a way, I want to like remind people that protecting the name ns0.noads.ca has, has not so much value. On the other hand, even if I would speak in clear text DNS to a big provider's name server uh, to, to discover the big provider's name server record at the parent that doesn't really leak anything. So assuming query minimization, so I don't like, you know, give away what I'm looking for, just getting to resolve that name server doesn't actually cause much of a privacy leak. Like if I'm going to ns15.godaddy.com or if I go to, you know, uh, paul.cloudflare.com uh, or however they name their name servers, um, that in itself, will still mean that there's thousands or millions of domains I could be interested in. So, so there's, there's a, there's a trade-off here that we should also um, keep, uh, keep taking into account. Um, because one of the things that Dalek does in the current proposal is that it, it puts all that data at the parent at the expense of that if the name server changes, that that data becomes outdated and wrong. Um, and so the question is, maybe leaking name server names is actually not that bad a thing. Um, so I think that would be a great discussion to further have. Uh, next slide. Uh, the other thing uh, I, I find is important to point out is that DNSSEC protects the DNS data from being falsified. And um, currently, transport security is mostly secured by the web PKI. So if we're looking at TLS, HTTPS, almost everything is done by web PKI certificates. If we take that as a, as a concept and say, look, okay, DNSSEC protects data against modification. Transport security is used for um, uh, the privacy of DNS. 
then it's not a big step to say, well, uh, DNS over TLS or DNS over HTTP um, is a transport security mechanism. So we could use the web PKI for it. So why not just roll out DNS over TLS on all auth servers using web PKI and ACME? I think all the code's already there. If we do that, then that, that rollout could actually happen fairly quickly. It doesn't require any protocol modifications. And so the argument that the DNS over TLS or that we would see you know, years of failures of probe queries that don't work, and then we have to find something else, and that we have to find a whole different solution for that authentication, I think isn't a fair uh, comparison yet. I, I think we should really look at, is that really not the case that this could be easily rolled out? And maybe in a later state, further limiting that web PKI using other mechanisms like uh, CA pinning, uh, EKUs, or, or other or EPP locking, or other things that we can do to sort of limit the amount of power the web PKI has over, over the DNS privacy part. Uh, next slide. Um, and the other uh, unknown for me is like, uh, if we put all this name server capabilities in the DELEC record at the parent, the problem is that if the name server does something that changes its capabilities, the name server itself in its own zones cannot fix that. So if it accidentally rolls uh, an ACME certificate uh, and the uh, and the upstream DELEC record says, you know, you should expect this certificate, but now it's that certificate or it's a different CA, um, then there's this whole process of how do you get this updated? So that is for me a reason to say the DNS capabilities, sorry, the name server capabilities should actually be advertised in the zone that belongs to the name server so it can update that itself and without external dependencies. Um, so that means something like um, an SVCB or DELEC record on the name server name instead of on the parent at the zone, which I understand some people are not a big fan of. Um, but again, is this really uh, many additional queries? So one argument is that it takes many more queries to find out all these this information about the capabilities of the name server down at the name server zone. But remember, most name servers serve millions of zones. So that am amortization of the name server capability, you get back over a large amount of zones. So I don't think it's actually that many queries. Even if it's like four additional queries per name server name, then those are all usable for like you know a million domains. So I think there needs to be a, maybe a bit more discussion about um, the disadvantage and the advantages of moving the name server capabilities from the from the as a zone data to a name server property. Next slide. Um, so here I'm giving an example. Um, so we could have like a, an SVCB at the name server, or we could have a day like uh, prefix before. Um, we, we, we can we can see how how, uh, how that can be uh, best done. Um, now I do understand that the alias mode reduces the the bad update problem because the alias mode basically once you have the record in place, you would never need to change it. But you always do go through at least one Dalek record that is a non-alias mode, because otherwise you have a loop that you can never get out of. Um, so there's some advantages. Uh, I talked about these already. Um, uh, one of the other arguments uh, was that um, if we add new RR types uh, to serve some of these things, then um, that, that takes additional queries. I want to point out that we do have a multi queue types draft that also would allow you to just ask for multiple uh, queue types at the same time and get them all basically for free. I think because there have been multiple different scenarios where people want to ask different queue types uh, that are currently not coming for free in a DNS protocol, that I think that extension is a more generic solution to actually ensuring that you can get all the queue types of a certain name you want in one go. And so not limited to this, like, you know, doing, oh, DS is the only one that comes for free with NS, or now we're going to add Dalek on top of, uh, you will also get this one free when you do an NS. Now, I think queue types is a more structural solution, say, I want these and these types of queue types all at once. Um, I think that's a more generic building block to use for the future. Uh, next slide. Um, 
The big unknown for me, and that has nothing to do with DNS, is how we get this DELIC record added and maintained in a parent zone, because that is going to be the maybe even the biggest delay. Like, I do not see this easily happening via a web GUI. Uh, there might be an EPP extension, but then how do you how do you populate the EPP data? Um, registrants putting in super complicated DELIC -like records is also pretty error prone. I think we have to be careful with that. Um, for DS records, we do have you know, a CDS C-Sync. For NS records, we have C-Sync. It doesn't see much of a deployment. We're hoping that with the upcoming DNS bootstrap that, that maybe uh, becomes easier to go from insecure to secure. Um, so, so we should look and, and discuss about whether this is going to be a big problem or not. Like just saying day like record fixes everything. We're taking five years to redo the DNS software everywhere. And oh, we also need to, during that time, talk to ICANN and get all of that, you know, and all the CCTLDs and all the ICANN TLDs to, to support this. It's a huge job. So if we could avoid that, that would be cool. Where it's possible, I think that should have some discussion. Um, well, another thing. Well, oh, sorry. Uh, so Roy is in the queue for a question. Do you want to take questions? No, no let's, let's. I'm almost yeah. done. So let's let's go. Let's go through the end, and then I think we can just have the generic discussion. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Um, just a small point of order, guys. We only have like eight minutes left for the remainder of the discussion. So um, I, I I assume that's going to be taken up all by this. So if the chairs would like to step in a bit more stronger, I would support that. Well, I I, I think it would be good because I think I've done uh, quite some good time in in, in putting. Uh, a lot of uh, concerns into this deck for discussion later on, not necessarily in this meeting. And we can read the slides um, and we can take it to the... To the yeah, to the <coughs> that's right. Need to. Um, yeah, so for time, uh, Paul, uh, can you spend another four minutes finishing up? Oh, Suzanne, please go ahead. Yeah, we're really almost, we're really short yeah. on the time here. So sorry, Paul, and thank you. But I think we should um, go ahead and have people start. Yeah, I, their yeah, indeed. General I'd, questions I'd like and impressions. Some time to wrap up, but uh, um, and then go for the general uh, discussion. Okay, sure. Uh, next slide. Um, so one proposal, instead of fixing this once for the day, like record to do this resolve at parent type, we could also decide to mark a section of our R types to be resolved at parent. So if we get it wrong with the day like record, we have other records that are also available that we can use. Um, so this will ensure that if we now pay five years of development time getting the day like record in there and it goes wrong, that we don't have to spend another five years getting another record at the parent wrong because, uh, because then with this one time, we have multiple records reserved that can be resolved at the parent. Next slide. Um, okay, next slide. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's sorry. Yeah, as Tim mentioned, we don't have much time to run over with uh, Meet Echo, so we yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I understand. So I just want to point out that uh, if we if we uh, want to do resolve at parent via DS, there's actually really um, a good way of doing this, and, and it is a bit of a hack, but it works today. We don't have to wait five years to get it deployed. You can just reserve an algorithm and digest type and put the R data in there and abuse the key tag value for the R type because they both happen to be two bytes. Um, it's actually, I think, ele an elegant hack. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Um, and also the uh, the in the direction that you can the redirection of the DS record you can do from the Dalek record you can actually also do with a DS redirection. So again, I put an example here where you can say with a special algorithm or digest type, go to ai a1.operator.net to actually point to a DS record that lives somewhere downstream. Again, this doesn't need any further DNS protocol changes other than understanding the, D, the, the latest DS algorithm. Uh, it works with the existing infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, next slide. Um, okay, we can talk about this uh, some other time. Next slide. Um, I'm, I'm just pointing out that there are things we should really discuss that are missing, just like Victor said. So, okay, go ahead. This was the last slide, uh, Paul. Um, Suzanne, do you want to? Um, no, this, I can wait. Discussion. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Comments, initial impressions, so on and so forth. Um, we did want to point out the DNS op chairs wanted to point out that we are keeping process discussions off of today's agenda because there's a number of things that can happen next, and those are more for discussion in the BOF in Brisbane. 
So technical discussions on the draft, questions, comments. So I see Rolf in the queue. No. Yeah, I want to make it really quick. So the proposal one having a range of 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 uh, numbers for curious type to be at parent, that's actually something we discussed. Uh, and we sort of backed off of it because we didn't want to kind of prolong the outlook. But if that's something people are feeling strongly about, I mean, again, as you said, this can happen in parallel. That that's that's absolutely no no, no problem at all. The other thing uh, you said, name service names are changed between domains. That is an assumption that you make on the implementation. I can assure you, there are implementations that don't do that. And also, one of the reasons we have all these Kaminsky style or whatever. Uh, cash poisoning attacks is because of the sharing. So there is good reasons for software and there's more than one software out there that doesn't do that. Sorry, I didn't I didn't understand the last point, but can you bring that to the list? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Victor. A uh, couple of things. Uh, uh, Paul, uh, the the idea of having more records at the parent, you know, seems mostly harmless. But again, I think you'd need to better motivate as to what a plausible use case other than for signaling delegation would be. Uh, you know, we don't want to have spurious random data at the parent that's hard to manage, you know, compounding the problem. Uh, so I'd like to see that better, uh, better motivated. Uh, sure, but, I'm, just, yeah, I'm, just saying, uh, I'm just saying we have 65,000 right. RR types, so we can reserve yes, two. Yes, we can, but it's not clear that there's, a, that there's actually a use for more than one. Uh, but OK, yes, I'll support that. It seems mostly harmless. I do want to point out that um, uh, while uh, putting things at the name server level is appealing in many ways, um, it complicates the resolver's budget for work per query under attack scenarios, having kind of spent some time working on a, on a real resolver, uh, one wants to limit the number of queries one issues in, you know, to resolve something. And if and an attacker will create you know, lots of name servers with lots of data to chase and so on, it gets pretty tricky uh, to not over, uh, overspend the budget. Uh, so we need to be careful on that end of things as well. Uh, and I'm surprised you thought that WebPKI only didn't had no mention of Dane. You know, uh, <laughs> that's all for now. Okay. Uh, more on the list. Thank you, Victor. Okay, other questions for, so for the general discussion of everything presented up to now? No, I don't see any raised hands or cute people. Warren, yeah. Yeah, Warren, if you had something to say about the... Bomb. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, and I mean, it is somewhat process related. So when the, this is the interim, there was also a buff request put in. The buff request was specifically talking about extensions to DEDEG. And I think that wasn't entirely clear when we originally proposed it to the IAB and ISG. Once that did become clear, um, there was a general sense of, whoa, I don't think we can approve a buff for extensions to something that doesn't exist yet. So what I'm proposing is it seems as though there's a huge amount of interest in this work. Um, I personally think it is more work than we can easily do in DNS up. So what I think would be useful it would be for the buff to be converted to be about Deleg itself you know, for the wider wider IETF audience, we'll have to make sure that there isn't an assumption that people have been to the interim. Um, and then I think it would be useful for the buff to discuss potentially doing something like forming a working group to investigate this more. I do think that if there is a working group formed, we need to be incredibly careful to make sure that unlike some of the other DNS related things, we have DNS ops people actually participate. So what I would suggest is, you know, if we have a buff and we form a working group, we have it in ops area and we try and request that it always be scheduled right after the DNS op meeting. So people can get up, walk out of the DNS op meeting and walk into the, you know, 
in Judelig or whatever. So um, I just wanted to sort of mention that, see if people are kind of okay with that and make sure nobody feels blindsided. Um, so basically, you know, make the buff be about Delig instead of Delig extensions and have it potentially be working group forming. And obviously we'll have to make sure that if a working group is formed, you know, we take Paul's considerations, feedback, et cetera, into account, right? This isn't, we're ignoring that. That's definitely strong input into whatever gets done. Thank you, Warren. Thank you. Um, there are two people queued, Victor and Roy. So Roy, if have you a specific question about the BOF or another? Otherwise, you can jump queues if it's directly related to Warren's comment. Otherwise, I... Um, the, um, I just want to point out that um, it was me who put in the BOF request. Um, I'll, 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 and, and, and Paul Hoffman was kind enough to, um, to, um, yeah. to sit in and say, um, uh, to, to manage that because I, I can't be in, uh, I can't be in Brisbane. Um, but just, just, uh, just to be clear, um, happy, happy to have a discussion with you, Warren, to change the buff request. Um, that, that, that's absolutely fine with me. Just we'll, we'll pick up the phone later and then, and then talk about this. So thank you, Warren. Um, Victor. Yes, uh, just one uh, final thing. I'd strongly want to encourage the authors to make the draft shorter and clearer over and above you know, technical content. Mm -hmm. Please, please spend some time uh, making it more concise and, and less repetitive and, and hopefully clearer in the same breath. And that will help with the buff, I think, as well. Yep. Thank you. Um, I, well, thank you all. So Suzanne, you still have something to share before we close? Um, no, I think we covered the, uh, we wanted to make sure we got to a very brief note on on the process options here, but I think Warren covered everything we wanted to make sure we said. Excellent. So everyone, please keep contributing on the mailing list. The, the authors and contributors also work on GitHub. But uh, to be clear, and GitHub is more the editorial stuff, discussions on protocol, et cetera, all relevant to the ITF should be and must be on the on the mailing list, on the ITF mailing list. Um, okay. Uh, still one before I close in one minute. No, no other. Peter Thomason, please. The floor is yours. Uh, yeah, so Jim is asking where to send suggestions. I think that I think that's a good question. Is the DNS up list for now the place to discuss this or the OARC chat or what's the venue? Yeah, again, um, this I think really discussions on the draft should be on the mailing list. Uh, Tim, maybe you have yeah, also DNS up yeah, is fine. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is in our charter, in DNS Ops charter, that we um, help yeah. with identifying yeah. new work that need that needs to be spun off, and we provide a home for this kind of discussion. Yeah. So, um, yes, please. Yeah. And when things are more settled as to where where this is going and and what's happening, there yeah. may well be another list. But for now, yeah. DNS Ops is yeah. So DNS Ops and and for sure uh, the MetaMost uh, Dalek. Uh, um, or GitHub. I think that's more, more for the collaborators, the authors to work together as, as a coordination, as a coordination and a cooperation platform. But discussions really uh, on, on protocol, etc., should really be on the on the mailing list. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you all, and uh, see you. Um, at the ITF uh, 119, the BOF and the DNSO working group. Well, if we have a BOF approved, of course, but we've good can I, can I Can I throw in one more thing? Yeah, yeah, Rob. <laughs> yeah. Before I forget. So people who are at DNSORG, um, who are, or who come early to DNSORG, uh, they can join me and others. I think Manu uh, set up a room for us to discuss stuff there. So if people are at DNSORG, and are there a day early? I think it's it August Thursday, and we'll have the Wednesday to discuss stuff on Delic and whatever. So just want to put that out there.
yeah so thank you for the for well the heads up and uh, that uh, a group of you will be working at OARC uh, to, to continue on this work and uh, thank you for all your energy and all your effort work uh, well the work you put into the in the draft all the contributors and the authors and uh, I'd like to thank all the participants to join the, the interim meeting and hope to see you at the DINESOP meeting and the BOF at the ITF 119. Bye bye.